Mm. Hey, look at you looking at me. <laughs> Playing hide and seek behind the plants. We found a mouse today. Yes, we did. We found a mouse in a mouse trap. Poor thing didn't survive the encounter with a mouse trap. Sucks to be you if you're a mouse and you try to come into my voodoo garden and eat my plants. That's the rules. You're allowed to go out and have fun, but if you come into my voodoo garden and you try and eat my plants, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I know that sounds really bad, but it, oh, look at what I got. I have stuff. Um, and uh, this all happened in like the last week or so. I got some new things for the voodoo garden. I think you're going to like it. Yes, you're definitely going to like it. Courtesy of a viewer, a friend. Uh, I got some things in the mail and it kind of surprised me because people are always sending me seeds and stuff, but somebody actually sent me some um, live plants. And last time I got live plants, they had uh, uh, fungus nets and that was really unfortunate because it was a beautiful plant. It was a spider plant. Somebody sent me some spider plants, but the soil had fungus nets. And so I'm really, really touchy about getting live plants because like I've mentioned before, I don't risk anything when it comes to my voodoo garden here. So uh, I was really kind of freaked out about receiving live plants. So I opened them up away from the voodoo garden, far, far away, and I checked it with a magnifying glass, made sure there was no fungus nets, and there wasn't. So I got some new plants, and I also went shopping. And uh, those of you who uh, joined me on, on Facebook, you know my uh, bad or strange or I Love Lucy experiences with Lowe's and uh, Home Depot, and uh, mainly Lowe's. I've had the worst luck with Lowe's, with the Lowe's website. I love Lowe's and, and Home Depot because, you know, they basically have everything under one roof, and I like that. But uh, dealing with their website, I have the strangest adventures with them. But uh, I went there shopping, and I got some stuff for the house, some lumber and plumbing and boring stuff. But I managed to go buy their, oh, yellow leaf. Oh, quad of dirt. Well, um, but I went by their garden section, and, of course, I, I could just live in the live plant section. I really could. And I've picked up some stuff that I thought you might like because remember I mentioned, I think it was an episode ago, two episodes ago. I don't know. Last episode, I got really messed up. I was half awake. I hadn't had enough coffee. I uploaded the Voodoo Garden episode onto the Praxis 55712 channel and I'm getting all kinds of views on it and stuff. And I thought, oh no, <laughs> oops. So if you want to see a Voodoo Garden episode down here uh, from a couple weeks ago, go on over to my other channel and uh, check it out. It's me in the voodoo garden on the wrong channel. Yep, I totally screwed that one up. But anyway, I went into the Lowe's uh, store and I went uh, into the garden section and I found some good plants. I wanted to add some stuff to the voodoo garden that would be everyday plants for everyday people. And uh, I know that sounds like I made it up and stuff, but no, it's actually true. I have a lot of exotics in here and I have some vegetables that I don't normally, you don't normally see like tomatoes and peppers being grown inside. And that's all well and good. And I've done that for many years. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to have everyday plants in here, which I haven't ever really had. So I looked at, uh, at, and they had a really good selection. Sometimes towards the uh, middle or end of summer, they're kind of lagging because people aren't really as interested in buying live plants. Well, I was lucky. They just restocked. And I was really kind of cautious too. And so I held up these plants to me. I'm blind as a bat too, by the way. And I'm holding them up to me and I'm looking for fungus nets because you never know if it has fungus nets and also spider mites. Didn't see anything, so I bought a few things. And uh, boy, I'm all grins today because I'm very, very happy with what I got and also with what was sent to me. So without yakking on further, come on in and take a look at what I have and see if it's anything that you might want to grow because I'm starting with baby plants. I could have gotten these in larger versions at Lowe's, but I decided, you know what? I want to start out small because small plants are really cheap. You can get them for, you know, like 99 cents to a couple bucks and then you can make them grow big. And that's what I've done before. Uh, most of these specimens I've grown from small plants to monstrous plants and uh, I've had great success with them. So I know that I can do this. And if you want to join me too, you can find these plants. Dirt clouds keep falling out of that stupid pot. And so I'm getting dirt clouds all over the ground here. Oh, well, well, that's, I guess, what happens when you grow plants inside. But anyway, if you want to start out with small plants, you can start out with small plants. They're so easy to grow. They're beautiful, and they are amazing when they get huge. Take a look at, uh, well, let's start out with what I started from seed and what I got from a friend, okay? Come on over here and take a look at this. I don't like pink. As much as I like sock monkeys, I don't like pink. Tiny R tends to like them, though. It tastes like strawberry, huh? Yeah. Go after the eyes. Can I have that? I can have that? No, I can't have that. <laughs> it keeps them occupied. 
What's it smell like? <laughs> no? yeah. Yeah. Doesn't look very remarkable, does it? But I started this from seed, and that's actually what's remarkable because I've never started this from seed before. This is called a sensitive plant, or I believe it's called uh, Mimosa pudica, or pudica, I don't know. Who cares? It's a sensitive plant. And uh, they also call them tickle me plants, but they've always been called sensitive plants. When they get bigger, when you touch them, they tend to collapse and fold their leaves in, and uh, that helps protect them. And uh, they're called sensitive plants. I grew these from seeds. Yeah, they're just some kind of like a ferny looking thing. Let me uh, try and hold this up without shaking too much. See? There's a few of them grown in here. People have asked me, Ray, will you grow a sensitive plant? Ray, will you grow a sensitive plant? And I, uh, I had grown one in here and uh, they have little tiny thorns on them. And I don't like anything that pokes me because I'm so uncoordinated. I poke myself on everything. But I thought, what the heck? So a friend sent me a little packet of seeds and I just planted a few. And uh, every single seed germinated. Wow. <laughs> what, are, what are the odds? But yes, I am going to be growing a sensitive plant. Eventually, I'm going to have to transplant this. But for right now, there's plant number one. That's the first edition of the common plants. A little bit exotic, but not really too awful much. Uh, when I was uh, growing and selling uh, indoor foliage plants, this was one of the plants that a lot of people really enjoyed. It's called a polka dot plant. It has green leaves and pinkish polka dots and blotches and stuff on it. It's a really cute plant. This was sent to me by a friend and it was sent in a little itty bitty, teeny tiny, microscopic little pot. And I immediately took it out of the soil, rinsed it off top to bottom in the sink and uh, rinsed all the soil off the roots to make sure there was no fungus nets, no nothing on it. I, I know it's, it, it sounds like I don't trust people, but I just want to make sure that everything is kosher inside my grow room and everybody's happy. It wilted a little bit right at first, but it perked right up. So this is a polka dot plant and they get to be these nice, decent, bushy looking plants with beautiful foliage. It's kind of like a coleus in a way with its color scheme. So if you want to grow something fun indoors, you can uh, put this in some bright indirect light and give it a decent sized pot. And you can, these respond really well to pinching and pruning and you can also take cuttings. They, uh, they are very easy to take cuttings from so you can give cuttings to your friends expand the plant into a larger pot. Very fun plant to grow. Many of you will recognize this. This is an African violet. Yep, I have regular violets growing wild in my yard. This is an African violet. It's a very common indoor house plant and you, you can find this at any garden center or grocery store and they normally have flowers on them. This one didn't have flowers. This one was sent in a small pot and it was very well packed by the way so it arrived in very good condition. Just a little bit of soil damage and stuff but normally you're not supposed to disturb them and people say to water them from the bottom because they don't like water on the leaves. I took this thing out of the soil, totally rinsed it off, splashed it around, got every bit of soil off the leaves, underneath the leaves, from the roots. This thing was soaking wet. I transplanted it. It kind of looked like crap for a day or two and then it got its mind right as its roots took hold. And yeah, they handle very well to being transplanted. At least this one did. It's got a beautiful underside to the leaves. The top of the leaves are a nice dark forest green. But look, underneath, yep, it's like a burgundy red, a pinkish red. And these are, these uh, put out flowers periodically and they're just beautiful. People say to water them from the bottom because you don't want to get water on the leaves and plus they don't like being watered from the top, blah, 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 blah. I always water mine from the top, but I just water around it. I don't pour it on top. And even when I do pour water inside, it never seems to hurt the plant. This is counter to what a lot of people do, but it doesn't bother the plants as far as I've seen. If you want to grow a, a nice, fun, uh, plant that flowers every now and then. African violet is a good choice. I want to show you a second African violet. This is the large one and it's a beauty. It's going to be really nice. It's going to grow. And by the way, you can take cuttings, leaf cuttings. Yeah, you take the leaf, shove it in soil and each leaf will grow a new plant. This one here may look like crap and it kind of does, but it's going through a little bit of a transplant shock and it also came looking a little bit crumpled up. It was a very light color like this when it came and uh, it was small and kind of packed into a very small pot, but I rinsed everything off, transplanted it. Now the lower leaves over here, they all died 
and that's to be expected when you transplant is going to go through a little shock and the first thing it does is it sacrifices some leaves so that it can survive and that's fine I don't mind but the new inner leaves in just the last week are nice and dark and beautiful and one thing I'm going to try and hold this without shaking because I don't want you to get seasick right there and right there hard to see but those are flower stalks yes this thing is so happy with its new soil its new light it's new life in the voodoo garden. It decided to give me flowers. So I'm very proud, very happy to have these new additions from the friend. Thank you so much, by the way, for sending them. I'm not going to be mentioning any names because I really don't feel that that's necessary. But you know who you are. People who send me plants, uh, they know that they're going to see them grow nice and healthy here in the voodoo garden. I'm going to give them every opportunity. But I wanted to make sure that you saw these in the beginning because they're going to get bigger and better. And uh, I hope you're going to grow some of these too. Little sensitive plant baby. Kind of neat, isn't it? I like it. I like it a lot. Thank you. Thank you again. I know I keep saying that, but I really do mean it. I do appreciate the gifts people send me, and I make every effort to grow as much as I possibly can. I always tell people, I can't guarantee I can grow everything because, you know, <laughs> I need an auditorium for that. And maybe someday I will. You never know. We'll see how the voodoo garden grows. But I wanted to say uh, I appreciate all the good stuff that I get here. Now, now, let's go on to the stuff that I got for myself. And you know what I really like about this is everything I get for this uh, voodoo garden from soil to pots to plants and everything else. It's all, I don't know, it's like a hobby for me. And um, I just enjoy doing it so much. It isn't even a work. I know people think that, you know, you got to work at making a garden channel and stuff like that. This isn't work. This is something that I do every day. This is something that I actually get all my other chores done with so that I can spend time doing this. And then I just flip on a camera and there you are and we're having fun. So this isn't work at all for me. So uh, I just want you to know that, that I'm not actually doing this as a job or that I have to do it or because, you know, people expect me to do it. It's just something that I, I do anyway. And the fact that you brought up that regular indoor plants makes it even funner because I've always wanted to get back into those and now I will. Okay, I have five. Why do I do that? I have five indoor plants that are the most common that I have seen that they actually had to offer. First one is a Hartley philodendron. These are the plants that have been growing forever in people's homes. You've seen them from grandma's houses to your houses to uh, on TV and stuff. They're normally seen hanging from a hook and uh, they trail down with these long, delicate uh, vines and they kind of go all over the place. They're never really straight and they have heart-shaped leaves and they're normally dark green. Well, this one was a little bit of a variation in it and this one is called a variegated Hartley philodendron. Take a look at this real quick and then we'll go on to the next one. Now common house plants tend to be easy to overlook, but if you look at them very close, they are actually works of art. They really are. Look at this. The leaf comes up here, starts out as a heart, and works its way into this long, graceful point. I think it's great. Now the leaves come out a regular color, but as they get older, they get the variation on them. And I think that's fantastic. Some of them are lighter colored, some of them are mixed, some of them are dark. It just depends on what mood the plant is in. The stems are really not a big deal. They're always generally thin. No matter how big the plant gets, the stems tend to look a little bit anemic, but don't discount them. They can actually support a long stem, many, many, many feet long, you know, up to like 12 feet, 20 feet long with a very thin stem. They're very easy to take cuttings from. That's why this is a fun plant to grow. It's really hard to kill. It grows well in low light. That's why this is a great house plant. You can pretty much put this anywhere. I mean, don't put it in a dark closet. That would be, you know, kind of dumb. But aside from being dumb, you can plant this like in a kitchen, a bedroom, hallway, you name it. But the more light it gets, the better it grows. So keep that in mind. Even though it can grow in low light, it does prefer bright filtered light. It doesn't really much go for the direct sunlight. It will grow in direct sunlight, but I've always gotten the best uh, growth pattern when it's just bright indirect light, like off, set off to the side of a window. There are a lot of different kinds of philodendrons. That is the wonderful 
thing about philodendrons. They've been bred all over the place and there are all different kinds. This one is the classic typical philodendron. They also have floor models and I grew one. If you go back many years uh, on the Praxis channel, you go back to my home up in uh, Bruno in the 80 acres. In the background, you can actually see a plant that has leaves like this. It's called Monstera or split leaf philodendron. That's the kind that normally grows up and they have like a piece of wood in there and the, the aerial roots hold on and the leaves are just huge and they got slices in them. That's called a monstera or split leaf philodendron. That one I grew to fruition, to basically the, as big as it's ever gonna get and it took over my living room and I didn't know what to do with it so I started chopping it up and eventually I planted it outside and gave it one last season out in the sun but I didn't uh, continue growing it because I took it to the limit of what I could do with it and I needed the room and also I was going to move so yeah I don't always keep my plants forever. This one is nice because you can either grow it in a pot on a table or you can hang it but uh, it's definitely not a floor model unless you want to put it in a pot and put things for it to grow up on you can actually do that too I've seen that. It's a very versatile beautiful plant. There is a cousin of it don't know if they're related don't really care but um, there's a cousin of it and it's called a pothos. A pothos is a vine just like the philodendron and this is a ground crawling or uh, climbing vine and uh, this one is remarkable in the sense that as it grows it puts down these little brown nodes on the, the oh actually come on in here and I'll explain it as I show you up close okay. And just like the Hartley philodendron it has heart shaped leaves. Now the difference in these is that the stem generally gets thicker as the plant gets older and the plant gets larger whereas the Hartley philodendron it doesn't. The stems generally tend to stay smaller. This is one heck of a grower and as it grows you'll notice right here up close it's putting down roots. It's very very well suited for doing this and uh, one of the ways that you can get these plants to do well for you and by the way they come in like dark green or light green, the marbled ones. They call the marbled ones Marble Queen and the regular ones are just standard. But they have light green, dark green, Marble Queen and they also have one called the California Pothos but that's actually kind of a rip off. It's not a different variety. It's a different type of growing pattern. But I prefer the Marble Queen. I don't know why. I just like the lighter colored marbled effect on it. It gives it a little bit more I don't know, character. And um, what I'm going to do with this pothos is I'm going to plant it in a larger pot. And uh, the way that you can get this plant to be actually more remarkable than just a standard plant is you plant a smaller plant in a larger pot and then as the plant grows let it grow around the pot in a circular motion and keep the stem pushed down. I usually take uh, 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 paper clips and I fold them into a U shape. You can take anything and you keep the stem just slightly buried at the junctions and every time the junction touches the soil it's going to put down roots and as it puts down roots it gets exponentially bigger and bigger and bigger. I saw this process done in a wholesale greenhouse when I lived in Denver and I had a plant store and they had a specimen that just blew my mind. They, the stem was thicker than my thumb and uh, the leaves were huge. They were as big as dinner plates. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And uh, that was their procedure. And then they take cuttings and then they put it in a pot and they sell it for a fortune. So this plant was making them a lot of money. And that's what you can do with this thing is as it goes, keep putting uh, it into there and you spiral it around. And then by the time it reaches the outside of the pot, it's actually a rather large uh, stem. And then just let it grow from there. And then you have this really large uh, cutting going out. And you can also take that cutting put it in a pot and then continue the process and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes because it's healthier. It doesn't actually rot behind the rooted area. You know like a strawberry you know you take a cutting and you, you put it in a, a well you take the runner and you put it in soil and then the stem rots. Unlike that this will keep alive air all along the stem all the way back to the mother plant and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. That is a nice growing procedure for the pothos and by the way yeah you can take cuttings like you would not believe. This is so easy to take cuttings from and you can spend like a, a buck on a plant and for the rest of your life you are going to have more plants than you could possibly shake a stick at. It's a wonderful plant, easy to grow, un, uh, just like the uh, philodendron. It grows in low light, medium light, high light, 
it's a very easy plant to grow and it's a very fun plant to grow and it grows fast. So those of you with low attention spans like me, <laughs> short attention spans, you're going to enjoy growing a pothos because you can actually see it, it grow. It's, it's a fantastic plant. This one looks very similar, but it's not similar at all. Now I've always had a soft spot for this kind of plant. This is called a Diefenbachia or it's also known as dumb cane. And you'll see these little ones in the stores, but boy, don't, don't be fooled. These get huge. Yes, they do grow huge. They will actually grow taller. The leaves will get bigger. The leaves will get monstrously bigger. It's just like baby Huey. It starts out small and then it gets big. There's a whole bunch of these plants in here. They tend to cluster them all together, but you can separate them and uh, plant uh, single ones. But what they do is as they grow taller, they form a stem a long stem that's sectioned out and uh, what happens is the leaves get bigger and you can actually take cuttings from these and plant the cuttings into soil and it will grow more and you can also pinch them back and they will grow uh, multiple shoots. You can do this with these and also what's called Dracaena and uh, Dracaena is also known as dragon tree not to be confused with dragon fruit. These are a fun plant to plant to put in a large pot because when they start getting bigger they're going to need a very large pot but it's well worth the soil investment and the pot investment because they will fill a corner. They will fill a corner and they will be a really stunning showpiece for the corner of your room. They come in dark leaves just like the philodendrons and the pothos. Dark leaves, light green leaves, variegated leaves. It's amazing what uh, the plant culture has done for indoor house plants in the last 30 years. They've gone from some boring standards to some really exotic beauties and these are no exception. When I was selling plants in Denver, uh, these were one of the hottest items that people would buy because they show well. They show well and but they get root bound very easily, very fast. So you got to make sure that you have a large pot. You can grow these root bound in a small pot and they'll just keep putting, it's like a banana plant in a way that when it gets root bound, it'll put out new shoots at the bottom and it'll get all clustered and stuff. And that's really nice. Problem is, is that when they're all clustered, they're not going to be the most healthy thing. And if you give these things low light, what they're going to do is become spindly and kind of go off to the side. They're not a vine, but they'll start looking really crappy. And uh, you got to make sure that you take care of these plants because once they look crappy, it's hard to get them to come back again. And also, I've noticed that these are extremely susceptible to spider mites. If a spider mite gets in your house, it may avoid some of your other plants, but trust me, it's going to find this plant. So I made sure that there were no spider mites on this. So always look underneath your leaves to make sure you don't have spider mites with these. When they get big, when this one gets big, I'm going to show you how you can take a cutting and put it in soil and make a whole new plant. And also you can take it and take it horizontally and put it in the soil and have multiple plants come out of one stem. That'll come in time in the voodoo garden because you're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. We're in it for the long haul. So as this plant grows, I'll show you how to grow it, prune it, propagate it, do all the fun stuff, fertilize it, and turn this thing from a little tiny baby into something that's probably going to fill up my corner. Okay? On to the next one. What do you think? The color is amazing. I mean, you can see the color on the camera, but you really have to see it in person to appreciate the glow that these plants put out. Yeah, and I, I know that all, a lot of the florists and the greenhouses, they will put a product called Leaf Shine on the leaves of plants to make them look prettier. And I don't really much like that because it's kind of like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right because it's, that's not what the plant's supposed to look like. So I always wipe off the leaves when I get them to bring out the natural glow and get rid of that artificial crap shine on it. But this one, uh, I never did, I never could pronounce the uh, Latin name for it. They, uh, the pros call them spath or spathophilium or spathophyllum, something like that. But they're known to the rest of us humans as peace lilies because I don't like going for technical names. That just seems a little pompous. This is called a peace lily and uh, it's, a be it's a beauty. And uh, of course there are like, what, a billion plants in here? And they form a lot like the Diefenbachia. They're not related as far as I know. And um, these you'll normally see in office buildings and uh, in homes, but mainly like in office buildings and stuff because they grow so well with so little care and they put out flowers at any stage. That's the nice thing. You really do get 
instant results with these. I'll put out this little white thing, then it'll form this white flower that looks sort of like a, a canna lily or something like that. Yeah, it's, a, it's really nice, but of course the, the pollen goes everywhere. But these are so much fun to grow. They grow in low light conditions, but they do appreciate a good amount of light. They do not like direct sunlight. Mine never did. I put one of mine in a, in a window and it just died. It died like lettuce in an oven. Yeah, it was really bad. But uh, these will grow well in low light conditions, but they do grow better if you can put them in a brighter light condition. If you have windows in your house, all of these plants are going to do fine, regardless of whether it's north, south, east, west. As long as you're getting some kind of light or you have any kind of grow lights, like if you're growing uh, indoor vegetables, these are going to do perfect in your house. That's why I selected them, because they tend to be the easiest to grow. Now the peace lily will grow huge. You get them when they're, when they're small like this and you can separate them, but they tend to look better if they grow in clusters. Plant them in a large pot because they will get root bound very, very, very fast. But put them in a large pot, grow them, and they will spread out. The leaves will eventually get so huge. Remember my banana plant? Yeah, their leaves will get as big as banana leaves. Beautiful dark green leaves, as graceful as you please. They're a great floor plant. Definitely not a hanging plant or a table plant when they get full grown. You're going to have to put them in a big pot, set them off to the side, and enjoy them from a distance because they're beautiful. Be careful of spider mites. They're susceptible to spider mites, needle bugs. I've seen those get on here, uh, aphids. But then again, a lot of plants are susceptible to those. Take care of your plants. Don't just expect them to take care of themselves because they rely on you. This is going to be a great addition to the voodoo garden. And yeah, it's going to get big. Definitely going to get big. So get a shot of it right now when it's small, because one of these days you're going to look back on this and go, my Gosh, I remember when he could pick that up with one hand. You're eating dirt. Busted. Peace Lily, this thing needs to be transplanted today. I'm actually going to be transplanting all of these today. That's why I got the buckets out and stuff. But I wanted to show you these before I did any of that. Last one. This one has some special meaning to me. This one is called Gynura, but that's for the pompous people. We just call it the purple passion, purple velvet, cascading velvet, whatever you want to call it. This is amazing. And uh, this plant here, come on, you know you want to see it up close. Check out the contrast between a regular green plant and the purple passion plant. It's crazy. This is just a stunning beauty no matter how you look at it. It has sharp, well actually not sharp as in pokey, it just has sawtoothed leaves and the newer growth tends to have more of this but all of them have this purple haze it's fuzz yep and it's just the most beautiful iridescent glowing purple fuzz that gives this plant the attraction that everybody loves on this plant and they grow really fast really fast they are a vining plant and uh, people love to put these in hanging baskets and uh, they will grow up real tall and then all of a sudden they go off to the side and you better be ready because they will take over your house and uh, they will go everywhere. They'll grow extremely fast. Now, there are some care tips that I can give you on this to keep it looking as good as possible. These things always make me smile because uh, uh, the, the history that I have with this plant is when I was, I think it was 16, 15 or 16. I was uh, working in I was uh, in Garden City, Kansas, and I was working in the fields, detasseling corn and uh, roguing sorghum. And that's what the kids did that were underage and we couldn't get regular jobs. We'd go out and detassel corn. Anybody that's ever done that kind of stuff in the fields in the Midwest, you know that is like a living hell because you're in the hot cornfields in the middle of the summer. You're miserable, it's sweaty, they don't give you many breaks, it pays minimum wage, and minimum wage back then, I don't, even want, I don't even want to say because it just makes me feel so old, but no, I'll say it, it was two ten an hour, $2.10 an hour. For $2.10 an hour, I did slave labor, and it was literally slave labor. You're out there wishing you were dead and wondering why you're doing this kind of stuff. And uh, you don't get paid much money, but I took the money that I made from that, and uh, I, w I went to Woolworths and uh, uh, I bought this little tiny plant and it was called a purple passion plant. Never saw it before in my life. And I thought it was 
I saw it and it was just beautiful. Beautiful. And uh, I bought it for my mom for Mother's Day. It's a little tiny plant. And I transplanted it into a pot and I hung it from the ceiling. And that thing grew and it grew and it went down to the ground and all over the darn place. This thing was a showcase of plant. And uh, my mother really appreciated that. And I really liked the fact that I could give her something that I earned myself because back then I was a bit of a thug and I stole stuff and I ran around and I stayed out late and I did things I shouldn't have done, a lot of stuff I shouldn't have done. But that was one of the honest things that I did in my life at that age because I was a horrible teenager. But that was one of the nice things that I did. It was honest, it, it had value and uh, it was done out of love for my mom. I didn't steal it for her, which I could have done, but I earned the money to buy something for my mom because I loved her so much. And uh, that's why this plant has so much meaning to me, the purple passion plant, and uh, she appreciated it too. So uh, I wanted to put this back into my grow room because um, my mom and I still have a close relationship. She's getting pretty old now. And uh, I wanna make sure that I always have something that reminds me of her, and that's what this is gonna do. But for growing conditions on this thing, uh, you want to make sure, it, although it will grow good in bright light, direct sunlight, the problem is, is that the faster it grows, the less purple fuzz it's going to have. If you grow it in very low light, it's going to get anemic and spindly and stuff. You have to find the fine line. So you want to make sure that it's diffused light, but slightly bright, but not too bright. You'll find the, the happy medium. The thing is, it'll grow in all those conditions. So it's not like you have to worry about killing the darn thing. It's just a matter of the purple. And uh, you don't want to let it flower. No, flowers are worthless on this plant. Uh, they, I think they stink. I think it was this plant. The, plant, the flowers actually stink. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's, uh, the beauty is in the leaves and in the growth pattern. You can take cuttings from this so easily, and when it gets too long, you just take a cutting with a few sections, snip off the leaves, shove it in a glass of water. Within a week, you're gonna see uh, uh, roots coming out of this, and you can just shove it in soil, and there it goes again. Pinch this back, it sends out side shoots. This is a fantastic plant for children, for people with low attention spans, or people that want something beautiful that's so easy to grow, so easy to manipulate. It's a wonderful plant. Yeah. <laughs> my dirt my soil is like the oldest soil on the planet because like I mentioned before I reuse my soil if a plant dies I throw the soil back in here and mix it with the other soil and uh, I'm always using my organic fertilizer so it's always feeding the soil so I'm this has so much history behind it and I use it I reuse it and it never gets depleted because the, the foundation of this is the cocoa peat, which is coir, and uh, the old potting soil mix, and uh, some vermiculite. That's it, just three ingredients in here. But the food that I give it recharges the microbes that are in the soil, so it's a living, breathing thing, and it stays alive. So uh, what I do is I take the old soil, dump it in here, toss a lid on, and I make sure, of course, that the plant isn't just watery, because I don't want to throw soil in here, put a lid on, and have it rot and mold or anything. It can be slightly moist, but not too awful moist and not too awful dry. And uh, I put, uh, pop a lid on, store it until I need it, and uh, that's all I do here in the grow room. Nothing special, just bright light. And the only reason I have all these lights, you don't have to have all these lights. The only reason I have these lights is because there's no windows. I shut the door and turn off the lights. It is so dark, you can't see your, eye, your hand in front of your face. But um, you can grow these plants indoors all over your house, from low light to medium light to high light. That's why I selected these. And also because, you know, that was the miracle of it. All of these plants are plants I would have gotten anyway. So the fact that they are so versatile was icing on a heck of a nice cake. So I'm gonna grow these plants all throughout the years here in the Voodoo Garden and hopefully they'll stay alive and hopefully no spider mites knock on wood because that is my big nemesis, spider mites. I hate spider mites. But if they come in, I'm gonna show you how I deal with spider mites proper, make sure that they go away. And if you have any questions concerning indoor plants, let me know. This is the beginning. I can't grow everything as far as indoor plants, but I'm growing as much as I can. And as time goes, I'm gonna add more. There are other plants that I'm gonna add, but for right now, I think all of these, and then with the polka dot plant, sensitive plant, the African violets, I think that's a good addition for right now. For one week, I think that's a good addition because I got a lot of transplanting to do. <sighs> It's a fun thing to do, but I don't really need to do that on camera. That's my time. I shared this with you and we had a great time, but there's a little bit of stuff that I like to do by myself because it kind of focuses me and gets me grounded back down with my plants. That's kind of me time, you know, with my plants. You know what I'm talking about? 
Okay, I got to get going. Thank you for joining me in the Voodoo Garden. I hope you had fun. I hope you're going to get some plants to grow inside and grow with me because that would be kind of nice if we did this together. Until next time, this is Ray in the Voodoo Garden. We are out of here.